Hello, I'm Bruce Barnes, the Ron and Donna Fielding Director of the Georgia's Museum. The trustees, staff, and members of the museum appreciate your taking the time to view this virtual community tour. Thank you for your interest in helping us to restore and preserve George Eastman's historic estate, one of two national historic landmarks in Monroe County. The historic mansion and its gardens require ongoing preservation efforts. Over the past decade, our institution has spent more than $6 million on restoration projects. Almost 30% of these funds have come from New York State. And these state grants have been critical to raising more than 60% of the funds from private sources and almost 10% from federal grants. Based on a preservation architect's recent evaluation, we have identified restoration of the chimneys and parapets of the mansion to be the highest priority project for the safety of our visitors, staff, and volunteers, and the prevention of water infiltration. This project aligns very well with the Finger Lakes Regional Economic Development Council's strategy to continue to invest in, preserve, develop, and promote the region's key assets. As a major tourist attraction, the George Eastman Museum brings in more than $10 million annually in economic benefits that overflow to local businesses, such as restaurants, hotels, and other cultural attractions. Visitors travel to the museum from across the United States and around the world. Their pleasant and rewarding experiences here cause them to return to our area and recommend the region to others. It is my pleasure to introduce Kathy Connor, who, who will provide an update on our restoration projects and how you can help. Hi, my name is Kathy Connor and I'm the curator of the George Eastman Legacy Collection at the George Eastman Museum. My job is to care and maintain George Eastman's historic home. And as many of you know, George Eastman was the founder of the Eastman Kodak Company here in Rochester, New York. And he built a very lovely, but very large historic home here at 900 East Avenue. You see it in the slide now. It's not only a 50 room mansion, but he encircled his entire property with lavish gardens and various garden structures. And in addition, over the years, we have now become a well-known photography museum where we not only store art photography, technology, cameras, um, projectors, as well as in a renowned motion picture collection and library in our um, building right back here. And in addition, we have two theaters where we show movies and do lectures and programs and a gift shop and a cafe. So we are now a major campus here at 900 East Avenue. And as you can see from the size of the house and the gardens and grounds, it takes a lot to maintain Mr. Eastman's home and gardens. We have been working for years on different restoration projects. We had a survey done in 2014 that told us the high priority projects we needed to address. We have done so over the last um, 10 years, the Palm House, the Port Cachere, which is really our side door entrance of the mansion, our conservatory roof, which is a glass roof, our east porch, our colonnade, and then dormers and the roof above the colonnade have just been finished. And we are still working on windows on the second and the third floors of George Eastman's home. And just recently completed our terrace garden pergola restoration. But I wanna give credit to the people that have helped support all of these restoration projects in the past years. One in particular, the New York State Office of Historic Preservation, we call them SHPO. They basically have funded many of our restoration projects and the list below them, Georgia Gosnell, Bruce Bates, the National Park Service, Dr. and Mrs. Richard Ziff, the Davenport Hatch Foundation, the Pace Family Fund at the Rochester Area Community Foundation, the Eastman Museum Council and the Rochester Area Community Foundation have helped us to make the matches that are necessary from state and federal funding. We are very indebted to all of them for their continued help. Now we begin with our project for this year, which is our National Historic Landmark Restoration, Chimneys and Parapets. Now, I think everyone here knows what a chimney is. Basically, they're architectural structures that help with the ventilation. And Mr. Eastman had quite a number of fireplaces in his home. And so we have quite a few chimneys that will need some work. Um, the other thing that we're going to be working on is what we call a parapet. It's a short wall or a heavy railing around the edge of a roof. In Mr. Eastman's home, we have not only this gambrel railing that serves as a parapet, but we also have these 
walls that you see over here that are short that kind of go around the entire structure of Mr. Eastman's home. And I'm going to share with you some images of some of the deterioration that has occurred on these chimneys and the parapets over the years. You'll see that there are 11 chimneys designated here by this aerial um, drawing. So there are quite a few that need to be reached, which involves scaffolding on all the different areas of the mansion to be able to access those for a safe restoration project. This is a rooftop chimney that will be repaired to improve the structural stability. Now, you can see here that many of these bricks are actually moving. They're out of alignment. Some of them have actually fallen off onto the roofs. You'll notice here there's a lot of sort of missing mortar on some of these different bricks. All of these repair issues will be dealt with in this new project that we're working on. You can see here a bitter, better picture of some of the bricks that have actually like dislodged. Not only have they started to crack and move, but this one here is almost ready to fall out. Um, this is on all of the 11 chimneys that we're seeing different things like this. And then you can also see here some of the efflorescence that's happening and then some of the spaces that uh, show you where mortar has now started to deteriorate or fall off. All of that will need to be replaced as part of this restoration project. A parapet, as I mentioned, is part of a wall extending above the roof line. This shows you sort of a close up view of one of those parapets. This shows not only some cracks that are happening here on these large um, coping stones, but also you can see the spaces here in each of these different bricks. All of this is allowing the bricks to shift and water, snow, things like that to be able to get into the historic structure. And that's unsafe, not only for the staff and the volunteers that are working within the mansion, but also for visitors who are on the property or our garden volunteers and landscape crew who are out and about working in the landscape. If things start to move or to fall, it would become detrimental and stuff. So we are needing to be able to address this soon. You can also see here from this photograph, some of the pieces of the brick have actually fallen onto the cedar shake roof and onto some of the uh, sheet metal that is um, sort of covering all of these different sections of the roof and the chimneys. So all of these repairs will be dealt with as part of this project. Here's another one of the coping stones. You can see it's quite large, but again, pretty obvious that the mortar is definitely failing and will need to be replaced. Some of these stones can be cleaned. And then you can see where some of this, the staining is actually sort of peeling away. And this I think is a very good uh, photograph to show you the mortar deterioration that is happening in all of the bricks and the stonework on the roofs. What's starting to happen inside is that the interior plaster on the third floor and in some areas of the attic, we're actually starting to see leaks happen paint is peeling in some of these different areas and so we need to be able to correct those leaks and that brick and stonework before it becomes too damaging to the inside of the third floor and the attic of the mansion which serve for many of us as offices workspaces but also places where people come in to do photo shoots here in the mansion as well or where special events and meetings are held so we are trying to prevent this by this project and what we really need from you is your help. Um, what helps our funders to understand the importance of our project is to know and understand that it is being used and appreciated by the people in our neighborhood and in our community. So if you are one of those people who walk your dog through the property every day or run or jog through our property, or you have come to have your pictures, engagement photos, prom photos, or wedding photos in our gardens and grounds, if you are someone who is a member and you want to just show your appreciation for this place, this National Historic Man Landmark that's in our Rochester community, that's a big tourist attraction and a boost for our economy and our community, we ask that you help us by writing a simple short letter. Our um, grants manager, Ruth Wagner, has prepared sort of a little red letter writing kit for you. And the link to this is right here on this PowerPoint slide. Once you use that link, you will get not only an executive summary of the project, talking about those chimneys and those parapets, but also the cost of the project. She includes the people you would write a letter to. 
and who to send it to, which is her at her email. She also includes in that package her phone number. So if there are issues or questions that you have, you can um, call her or email her and she'll respond right away. We need to get these letters of support by July 25th, 2022. Those letters will then be submitted with our grant proposal to the state for funding for this project. We really would appreciate your help with this and the letter can be short and simple, but just to show that you care about the institution, it's important to you, um, not only to keep it safe for tourism and for the staff, but also to keep it looking good for our future generations who will come and visit. Thank you. 